Today's word, we are coming from Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. And we're going to look at verses 9 through 13. Romans 10 verses 9 through 13. Many believers, they are very familiar with these verses. Let's talk about it on today. Let's, let's dig into it a little bit on today. Romans 10 verses 9 through 13. All right, the reads as follows. It says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. If you are taking notes on today, I am coming from the topic, it's just that easy. It's just that easy. If you have ever began to do something initially, um, in the beginning, you probably thought that new thing, that new task, that new assignment was hard. Uh, that new thing that someone gave to you to, to repair or to fix or to work on, when you initially looked at it, you're like, man, this is, this is hard. This is difficult to do. But then if you began to work on it, you realize it wasn't that difficult as you thought it would be. As a matter of fact, it turned out to be a whole lot easier than you had imagined. Um, I remember learning how to drive a, a stick shift and it seemed like it would be difficult to learn how to drive it, how to have the right pressure points of the accelerator and the clutch, knowing when to shift and not to shift, just learning all of the movements and the mechanics of a stick shift. And I'm like, Man, this is difficult to learn. But over time, you, you, you learned how to drive a stick shift and you're like, oh, man, this is easy. This is not as difficult as I had imagined it would be. Sometimes the things that you think are difficult are actually sometimes easy. Here at Grace Center, in this epistle, the Apostle Paul, he, he wrote for us and he discusses salvation. He, he, he talks about salvation. When you read the earlier verses in this chapter, uh, you will see that Paul had a desire for Israel, for the Jews, to be saved. You see, the Jews, they were following God, but they were not following Jesus. As a matter of fact, that's what the whole uproar was about when Jesus came to earth. And you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all of them. Uh, they came against Jesus because Jesus was telling them, I am God in the flesh. Um, so they did not want to be a disciple or a follower of Jesus and they considered the things that Jesus said and did was blasphemy against God. 
So they would not follow Jesus, but they kept on doing the things with their uh, uh, traditions and they followed God. And that's just like today. Uh, you have certain people, they say, well, I believe in God, but they don't believe in Jesus. Yeah, they believe that that there is a God, but they don't believe that God sent his son, Jesus, to die on a cross. Uh, see, the question is this, Grace Center. Here's the question. Can you know God apart from Christ? Let me say that again. Can you fully know, can you have a knowledge of God apart from Christ? Here's the answer. I give it to you. We'll cheat a little bit today. Um, the answer is no. Uh, you cannot fully understand, and we'll never fully understand God. Let me rephrase that another word. You cannot know God apart from Christ. In order to know God, you have to know Christ. Uh, Paul worked so hard uh, uh, to get the Jews to receive Christ. Uh, he wanted them to get away from the traditions and the things that they were accustomed to doing. He said, you must follow Jesus. You must follow Christ. Jesus, the one who came and died on the cross, he was the anointed one. He was the Messiah. He was the son of God. He was God in the flesh. John 14 and 6, it talks about that, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You cannot get to the Father unless you go through Jesus. So can you... Can you know God apart from Christ? No. You have to go through Christ. You have to go through Jesus, the door, okay, in order to get to God. You had the Jews following their traditions, doing all these type of things, but simply would not follow Jesus. They were following their laws, doing everything according to the law, trying to follow the law perfectly, but would not follow Jesus. You see, Grace Center, Christ is the end of the law because he fulfilled the law perfectly. He didn't come to do away with it. He came to fulfill the law that the Jews were trying to abide by. He, he was the end to it. He fulfilled the law. In other words, watch this. No one could keep the law. No one can keep the law. Uh, now, you may ask the question, uh, if no one can keep the law, why did God al allow the law to come into existence? Well, that's a good question. You see, God allowed the law to come into existence to really show us how much we needed help and that we would never be perfect individuals aside from him. But when he sent Jesus, okay, to fulfill the perfect law, Everything that the law had was wrapped up inside and around Jesus Christ. He fulfilled the law perfectly. We could never fulfill the law and do everything perfectly by the law ourselves. God realizing that and he realized that we ourselves could not uh, abide by the law perfectly within ourselves he sent Jesus so when Jesus died on the cross and when we confess Jesus and believe in Jesus we believe in everything that Jesus did because the law was wrapped within him he fulfilled the law perfectly you see the law 
it shows us our flaws. The law shows us our weaknesses. The law will reveal to us the things we need to work on. And when Jesus came and he fulfilled the law, he said, I am coming. I am going to fulfill the law that you are trying to live out so perfectly. But it's going to be fulfilled in me. You cannot do things on your own. You need the help and the blood of Jesus Christ to get you through from day to day. You're going to come up short. The law will expose to us and show us our shortcomings. But where we come up short is where Jesus steps in. When we miss the mark, when we fall and we have all our shortcomings and our flaws and our issues, Jesus understands that. When he came from heaven to earth, he walked as man on this earth as a model and a blueprint to how we should walk and conduct our lives. Right now, he's at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us so that when we do fall short, Jesus leans over to God. The Father said, Lord, Father, I know what they're going through. Remember, I walked on earth. I was the model for them. So when they, when they come to you to ask for forgiveness, you will forgive them of their sins and their shortcomings by what I did on the cross 2,000 years ago. We can never fulfill the law. We can never uh, abide by the law perfectly. It revealed our shortcomings, our weaknesses, and the things that we had to work on. That was the law. But the Jews, Israel, they wanted to keep their traditions. They still wanted to keep the law and try to abide by the law as much as they could. Grace Center, with salvation, you cannot work for your salvation. Amen. Even with the law, trying to do different things, trying to be a perfect individual, trying to dot all your I's, cross all your T's, zig all your Z's. You're trying to do everything perfectly by the law, but the law in and of itself cannot save you and you cannot work for your salvation. Ephesians chapter 2 Verses 8 and 9. This is actually the, the foundational scripture for the Great Center. Uh, Ephesians 2, chapter, uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, we are saved by grace. Okay, when we receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it is by the grace of God. This scripture says that it is by grace that we're saved, but watch this, it's also saved through faith. It takes faith to believe in someone that you have never seen. Amen. It, it, it takes a lot of faith and a lot of trust to put your souls, to put your lives into something and to put uh, uh, your trust in the Bible. Okay. Uh, uh, words that are written on pages in a book. That takes faith. But when you place your faith in it, God will give us the grace and he will accept us in when we place our lives in Jesus Christ's hand. And watch this. <clears throat> that verse also says, uh, 
and that it's not of ourselves, okay? It is the gift of God. In other words, it's not anything that we did, okay, to uh, have allowed us to be saved. No, it, it, it's not anything we did uh, to be saved. Uh, it was all in what Jesus Christ did. Okay, not of ourselves. It's not like we just had the will to be saved. Okay, it is by the, the, the grace and the mercy of God that we are saved. And the Bible says that it is a gift of God. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. It's like when someone will come to you and present a gift to you. Okay. They are giving you something. They are presenting something to you that they want you to have. They say, hey, I thought about you. I had you on my mind. And this is a gift from me to you. Now, when you receive that gift, it is up to you to unwrap the gift. It is up to you to receive the gift that is given to you. Now, you can deny the gift. You can say, no, I'm good. You can keep the gift. I do not want it. You can deny it. But when someone is giving you a gift, they're giving it to you, hopefully, with good intentions. When God sent Jesus Christ to us and for us, God had good intentions. Um, he had good motives for when he sent his son, Jesus Christ, just for us. Jesus is a gift from God. Hmm. We're coming up. On Christmas now, believe it or not, it, time is flying by, um, but department stores, they do things differently during Christmas time and even after Christmas time when it comes down to exchanges and refunds. They set up special processes and they put them in place. They already know that when people receive gifts on Christmas Day, a lot of the gifts that they receive, they're going to return back to the store. <laughs> so they have special processes in place. Sometimes they don't ask for receipts. They don't ask how long you had it. Okay. They will take the gift, take the presents that you received on Christmas Day and give you a refund or give you a credit for whatever, you are returning back to that store. You see, God gave us a gift. And a lot of people will deny the gift that God has given us. And they want to send it back to God. My Lord. And say, so you know what? I don't want your gift. You can keep your gift. Okay? I don't need your gift. I am perfectly fine without the gift in which you are trying to give me. What a, uh, how can I say this? Uh, how arrogant can we be that we can tell someone mm. that has always been here what we need? Hey. Mm. Uh, 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 mm. uh, the nerve the unmitigated goal of us mm. to tell the creator, the one who created all, mm. spoke everything into existence, who blowed into mankind, mm -hmm. and tell him, no, I don't need what you're trying to give me. How can we tell a God that knows all, sees all, can do all, has all hand, and, and has all power in his hand? How can we tell him mm. what we need? We have the nerve to do that. Say, God, that's okay. I'm good. <laughs> I don't need the thing you're trying to give me. So you can take it back. You can put it back on the, the shelf where you got it from. I am perfectly fine living out my life.
the way I'm living it. That's what certain people do when they deny the gift. When they won't receive the gift that God has given us. But even in that verse, even in that verse, 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 verse 9, there says, uh, it's not of works. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not of works. Lest any man should boast mm. or should brag about it. Mm. Um, um, you cannot work to be saved. Um, it's, it's nothing you can do in and of yourself to receive salvation. You, you, you can't work to achieve it. Okay, because if you can work to achieve it, then you can tell God, well, God, I did this by myself, by my own, by my own hands, by my own intellect. I did this. <laughs> no, he said, lest any man should brag about it. Okay, should boast about it. Okay, it is not of works. It's all about what Jesus did. Amen. It's all about Jesus. Paul's desire, okay, his desire was that everyone should be saved, including the Jews, okay? He wanted everyone to be saved. So he wrote about it, okay? He was led by the Holy Spirit to talk about it. So let's look at our scripture text. Let's, let's, let's go to it, okay? It says in verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. What you see here is that in order to receive salvation, you confess, you believe, and you receive. I've said this before at the Grace Center. The many members know I, I've, I've, I've spoken about that. You confess, you believe, you receive. That's it. Confess, believe, receive. Um, this is not lip service, but it must be heartfelt. Mm -hmm. Okay? It must be heartfelt. And watch this. Uh, this same formula of salvation. It works for everyone. Amen. It works for everyone. It doesn't matter your race, mm -hmm. your background, your bank account. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter who you know. All right. It doesn't matter how many TikTok followers you have. It does not matter all of the connections that you have within your network. Okay, none of that matters when it comes to salvation. Mm -hmm. It's a level playing field when it comes to receiving salvation. You cannot buy salvation. There's no need to try and jump the line when it comes to salvation. You don't have to be uh, associated with certain clubs or affiliations to be saved. Okay, there's not a good old boys group mm. in order to receive salvation. Mm -hmm. Salvation is open to everyone. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. It's open to everyone. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe in Revelation, it talks about that when we get to heaven, we're going to see a multitude of people. That we can't even number hmm. from all types of tribes mm -hmm. and kindred. Okay. In other words, all different types of people with types of backgrounds. It's going to be a variety of people mm -hmm. when we get to heaven. I believe it was last year or some time ago how I spoke about and talked about how God is not a racist. Hmm. I don't know why I'm going here. It is not in my notes, but let's go here. Mm -hmm. If 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 you don't like the people down here mm -hmm. that may not fit within your network and your group of people, you're gonna be miserable in heaven. Mm -hmm. 
Come on, because man. when you get to heaven, you're going to be around a lot of different people, all types of backgrounds and associations yes. and everything, all type of individuals. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like your neighbor today, you're going, you're not going to like heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Whoever that's for, the who are saying, you know what, I don't believe in your God because your people believe in that type of Jesus. And I don't believe that type of Jesus even existed. So if you don't like your neighbor who believes in Jesus, you're going to be miserable in heaven. You're going to be miserable in paradise. And what's the need to be miserable in paradise? Paradise has everything you need, has everything you want. It has everything that you can ever, ever ask for. Yes. And you're going to be there for eternity. So I, I, I say, and, and I hope, and I recommend, mm -hmm. and as my drill sergeant would say, it would behoove you uh -huh. to place your life, place your soul in the hand of yes. someone who can save you and who can do things for you that yes. you cannot do for yourself, yes. whoever that's for. Yes, yes, Lord. All right, let me get to my little message. Mm -hmm. We're almost done. Watch this. Yes. Let's go to verse 10. Verse 10, verse 10. It says, for with the heart, hmm. man believeth mm -hmm. unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So in other words, watch this. You believe with your heart, mm -hmm. but you confess it with your mouth. Mm -hmm. All right. You believe with your heart. But you confess it with your mouth. And when you do that, okay, when, when, when you do, when you make confession, you are saved. When you believe it in your heart, it's not just lip service coming out of your mouth. When you do that, you are saved. You have to confess it. Mm -hmm. okay. What is confession? Well, confession here in the Greek, it means to agree with. All right? It means not to deny. Mm -hmm. It means to declare openly. It means to speak out freely. All right, confession. Let's say it again. Confession here in the Greek here, it means to agree with, mm -hmm. not to deny, to declare openly, mm -hmm. to speak out freely. Mm -hmm. So when you confess Jesus and when you agree Okay, with what God has done by God sending his son Jesus, you agree with that, him coming, dying, and being resurrected from the grave. You agree with it. Mm -hmm. You don't deny any of that took place. You don't deny it. Uh, you declare it openly. You confess it. You, you, you speak it out, okay? Mm -hmm. And you speak it out freely. Mm -hmm. In other words, when you speak it out freely, no one has a gun to your head. Mm -hmm. It's not by coercion. Uh -huh. You're not being forced. No one is saying you must believe in Jesus. Believe in Jesus or die. No, you must do it freely. Yes. yes. When you do these things and confess Jesus Christ, Believe it in your heart, mm -hmm. you're saved. According to the word of God, you are saved. Amen. Let's continue on. Verse 11. And we're almost done. Verse 11, it says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him should not be ashamed. Mm -hmm. The Living Bible uh, says it like this. For the scriptures tell us that no one who believes in Christ will ever be disappointed. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> For anyone who believes in Jesus Christ, you won't be disappointed. Let me say this right here. I have been a believer for a long time. I remember growing up as a small child. Where I stayed at, the church was like right here. We can take a rock and almost hit the church. All right. I have been in church all my life. Okay. Mm -hmm. It seemed like from the womb, I have been in church. I don't, I don't, I don't know anything else. I mean, I've always been in church. Now, of course, I, I went my own ways as I grew older, of course. But just growing up in church, okay, I I know, I know church. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I knew different things about church, right? Um, um, and um, I have believed, I've placed my, my life in the hands of Christ. Mm -hmm. I don't have enough time in a day, okay, to tell you the things I have been through. And I know when I came out of different situations, I know it was nobody but God. God, oh, man. by the blood of Jesus, it was nobody but God who did this, did that, because I'm a believer. I mean, listen, <laughs> I know for myself, mm -hmm. okay, and I am a witness. You know how you have people who are on commercials and in magazines, how they will promote something? And sometimes even on television, you see the commercial say, this person has been paid. <laughs> and this person is a spokesperson who has been paid. Mm -hmm. Well, God didn't pay me anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. The only thing he paid was with the blood of Jesus. All right. But I am a spokesperson yes, for Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. I am a spokesperson to tell you mm -hmm. that if you place your life in the hands yeah. of Jesus Christ, you would not be disappointed. If I'm not a, I don't bet, I don't gamble, but if I was a betting man, mm. I'll put everything on the table yes, for you to place your life in the hands of Jesus. Amen. Grace Center, brothers, sisters, uh -huh. you would not be disappointed. Uh -huh. He would never let you down. Mm -hmm. He would never fail you. Even when you do not understand Stand mm -hmm. God when you don't understand the things that He's doing, yeah. He still will not disappoint you. Mm -hmm. Just give it some time yes, for Lord. Him to work out whatever He's working out. Yes. Look, we have been virtual mm -hmm. going on close to three years. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of things I don't understand, yeah. hey. but it's one thing I do know. The God I serve, he's able. Yes. The God I serve is still on the throne. The God I serve has never, ever let me down. Yes. And I would not deny, I would not push away Jesus. Yes. I would not say, God, that's it. I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm going to go serve this God. I'm going to go worship this God. No, I'm going to stay right here flat-footed and still talk about the goodness of God, yeah. the grace and the mercy of God, yes. the God that wakes me up, yes. the God that restores me, the God that heals me, the God that blesses me, no matter what I go through, even if I don't understand it, even if I don't agree with it, he's still God and he will never yes. disappoint me or let me, can I get an amen somewhere yes. right through here? Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes, Lord. Mm. That's the God I serve. Yes. He has never let me down. Never. Zero goose egg. Never mm. let me down. I can, If I tell you testimonies, you would think I'm lying mm. about some of the things I've been through, some of the things I've seen, the miracles, the, the supernatural things. I've experienced. Mm -hmm. You would think I'm lying. Mm. Jesus Christ would never let you down. Amen. Never. Amen. In all caps, bolded, underlined. All, he would never let you down. He's a God of mercy. A God of grace. Amen. Hmm. You won't be disappointed mm. by placing your life mm. in Christ. Yes, That's the one. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Hallelujah. It says, For there is no difference mm. between the Jew mm. and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich mm. unto all, unto all, yes. unto all that call upon him. That's self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. Do I even need to go there? Okay. No matter who you are, he's rich unto grace and mercy mm -hmm. unto everyone. Amen. As I said earlier, it doesn't matter your background. Yes. It doesn't matter who you are.
God does not discriminate. He's an equal opportunity person, mm -hmm. God, when it comes down to him passing out salvation. Mm -hmm. When he passes out salvation, he's not saying, I'm going to skip you because I don't like what you did. I don't like what you're doing. I'm going to skip you. No, he, he allows salvation to go to everyone. It's up to us to receive salvation. Mm -hmm. Next verse. Let's, go, let's continue. On. Verse 13, our last verse. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Okay, Whosoever. Same thing as the previous verse. It doesn't matter who you are. If you call on the name of Jesus with a sincere heart, okay, and you confess Jesus, you will be saved. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. It's just that easy. Amen. Look who wrote this. Hmm. Paul wrote this. <laughs> do you understand, or do you know the history hmm. of Paul? Paul was a Pharisee. Mm -hmm. Paul used to persecute Christians. Hmm. He used to persecute them, uh, do all sorts of things, okay, against Christians. And so he had his experience on the Damascus Road, mm -hmm. all right, and he encountered Jesus, all right, but Paul changed his life, okay? Mm -hmm. He understands, he knows, he has this experience with Jesus, and he wants other people to experience what he's experiencing. Yes. That's the way a lot of believers are. We want other people to experience Jesus. Yes. It's like, and I, I've used this analogy before. You probably heard this analogy before. It's like you go to a, a nice restaurant. You have this great meal. You want others to experience it as well. You're like, yo, you have got to try this out. Mm-hmm. Okay? You have... You have got to try. I, I, I tried this last week at this restaurant. It was the best meal I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Okay. The word says that taste and see that yes. he is good. He's good. He's, 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 he's real good. Mm -hmm. Now, I will say this. Certain believers, they do take it overboard. Mm -hmm. Certain ones do. All right? But... It's just that certain ones, we're just so excited and we're just so passionate. We know what Jesus can do for us. Mm -hmm. And after all, it is your soul mm -hmm. that's on the line. Amen. It's your soul that is on the line. When you leave this earth, mm -hmm. you're either going to be in hell or heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is, is, is no in-between place. It's either hell or heaven. But when you place your life in Jesus Christ, you are saying, you know what? I am putting my stake in the ground. Mm -hmm. I confess Jesus. I believe it in my heart. I'm going to, I'm going to where the Lord is at. Amen. Okay. For eternity. Okay. When you get to heaven, no one can push you out. Okay. No one can 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 kick you out of heaven. All right. On the flip side of that, it's the same way with hell. Mm -hmm. For eternity. That's right. Et eternity. So if we're passionate mm -hmm. about receiving Jesus Christ, we know the uh, what can happen. Okay. We know the replicate the the the, the repercussions of. You dying in your sin by you not receiving Jesus Christ. Mm. So we don't want anyone to be in that predicament. Mm -hmm. So we're saying, hey, place your life in Jesus. Okay, We're not forcing you. Mm -hmm. Okay, You have to speak it out freely. Okay, You have to believe it freely. Okay, Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. But it's your soul that's on the line. Amen. And the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. There's a lot of things going on in this world. You cannot turn your television on without seeing all types 
of chaos and things that are happening in this world. Mm -hmm. You never know when or what's going to happen to you. You don't know when you're going to leave this earth. Young people, you may think you have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Young people die too. Mm -hmm. Young people die too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you don't think, you may think you have all this time to get it right. You don't know. You don't know when you're going to leave this earth. Hmm. I'm done. Great Center, receiving salvation is not complicated. Hmm. All right. It's not complicated. Uh, it's, it's, it's more complicated to learn how to ride a bike than it is to receiving salvation. Hmm. It's not complicated whatsoever. There are no, no hoops, no assessment tests that you have to take to see if you're qualified to receive Christ. What I just laid out for you is just that easy. It is a gift that God gave to us when God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, Jesus Christ is the gift. A gift that has been, that's been given to us freely. And he's saying, here, this is a gift for you. From me to you. I want you to receive this gift. It's just that easy. Not complicated. No special formulas. It really is that easy. The virtual doors of the church are open at this time. I just discussed salvation. I did the best I could to explain it. If you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord, not your mother's Lord, not your father's Lord, not your grandmother, grandfather, your Lord, if you don't know him as your Lord and personal Savior, you can receive him right now. God is saying, here's a gift. My son, Jesus, is the gift. I'm giving you a gift. Will you receive the gift? Will you unwrap the gift? Will you take the gift that I'm giving you? If you're not saved, but you want to receive the gift of Christ on today, you can say this prayer with me. The prayer itself is not easy. It's, it's not, not difficult. It's very easy. Very easy. Watch this. If that's you, if you want to receive the gift of Christ, say this prayer with me. Say, Dear God, thank you for having me on your mind. Right now, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus came that Jesus died and that Jesus rose from the grave it's just that easy if you have prayed that prayer and it wasn't just lip service you didn't, didn't just say it because you just want to say it just to feel good and you meant it in your heart you're saved it's just that easy and right now if you pray that prayer there are angels in heaven rejoicing and celebrating because there's another member another person that's going to be in paradise is going to be in heaven mm -hmm. for eternity if you have prayed that prayer we would love to hear from you let us know so we can connect with you welcome to the family. For all others, if you have any special prayer requests, you can uh, let us know as well. Uh, comment in the comment section. Send us a private message. We'll love to connect with you and, and pray with you. Amen. Amen. All right. It is tithes and offering time. Tithes and offering time. We have several different ways in which you may be able to give. If you go to our website, thegracecenterga.org, 
www.gmail.org. Uh, click on that give link. It has the several different ways in which you may be able to give. You can give directly through the site. You can give uh, via our uh, GiveLify app. You can give via Cash app, which that's the Grace Center GA for our uh, our uh, Cash app, the Grace Center GA. Uh, or you may give through our post office. Uh, and all of that information should be on the website. And if you're watching through uh, Instagram or Facebook, you'll see the address for that. Um, but yeah, we have several different ways in which you may be able to give. Just go to the GraceCenterGA.org and you can see the list of ways in which you may be able to give. All right. Look, I hope and pray that this message has blessed you on today. Um, if you have a difficult time explaining salvation, um, you can just pass this message on. <laughs> Click that share button. When I send this message out earlier or later on in the week, um, just share it with others, forward it on. It's an easy way that you can share the salvation of Jesus with others um, just by clicking a button just by passing something on. Um, you never know the lives you may be impacting and the souls uh, that you could be used as a conduit uh, for others to be saved. Amen. Also, as you can see, got the Falcons on the day. Uh, they play uh, shortly here. So um, I will see how that go. Um, but, um, you know, it's, it's the first Sunday of, of, of football season. So, uh, you know, I don't know who your team is, who you're rooting for. Uh, but we'll see how today go for uh, the home team on today. All right. Let us pray as we are dismissed on today. Lord, we thank you for all you do. We thank you, Lord, for your son. Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, for this word, this message uh, that you have given unto us. I pray that whoever needed to hear this, heard it, whether it is today or a year from now, two years now, whenever they hear this message, I pray that they will take heed to it. If they're not saved, I pray that they will place their lives, their souls, in the hands of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Yes, Lord, I pray that they will place their faith in him and believe in him, Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. I thank you in advance for working it out. I, I pray that those who are on the fence, and they have been on the fence for years, they may be entangled into some other things and may be in bondage to another religion. I pray that by the blood of Jesus Christ, that they are released from the stronghold, the strong man that has them bound, that has their minds, thinking that the path that they're on is the right path. I plead the blood of Jesus against every demonic force and entity that may be trying to influence them to go in the opposite direction. I plead the blood of Jesus against every demonic spirit. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all others who have special prayer requests and special needs and things and situations that they may be facing, I pray that your will is done in their lives. Lord, whatever they are needing from you, you will have your way in their lives, Lord. Bless the tithes and the offerings that have been given. Bless it in this ministry. Bless it also back into the lives of your people. Well, as we leave this place, but never ever leave your presence. Please go before us. Make every crooked place straight in our lives. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. It is in Jesus Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. 
All right, have a blessed week, everyone. I love you. Be safe. Take care.